By 1944, the war had taken a sharp turn for the Axis forces after three years of military dominance. They were not only severely depleted in strategic resources, but also facing an overwhelming Allied offensive in all the theaters of World War II. As the Allies threatened to achieve complete aerial supremacy over Europe, Germany's high command opted to halt the production of bombers and large aircraft to concentrate on developing state-of-the-art jet fighters. But the legendary German engineering would not be enough to give the Axis the upper hand this time. The Allies had caught up with their aviation industry, and the Germans panicked when they learned their enemies were about to deploy the British Gloucester Meteor jet-powered airplane. In response, the Luftwaffe clung to its hopes of developing the Focke-Wulf TA-183 Hookerbein, a groundbreaking jet fighter that would replace the Messerschmitt Me-262, the first operational jet warplane in the world. Still, as the Allies drove ever closer to Berlin and the last steel and aluminum stockpiles were exhausted, the Germans continued their desperate attempt to build the aircraft, hoping that they could repel the Allies as they made their final push towards the Führer bunker. And if they had to use wood to complete the project, that's how it would be. A desperate situation. As World War II reached its final stage, Germany not only started to lose ground on the battlefield, but in the technology race as well. With Allied forces constricting them from every front, and with a devastating lack of oil, aluminum, and steel, not even the creation of the Messerschmitt Me 262, the world's first jet fighter plane, seemed to be able to shift the balance in Germany's favor. Still, the German high command clutched to the idea that if they were able to create a faster, more powerful, and easier to produce jet airplane, then perhaps they might be able to take the Allies by surprise and repel their incursions into Germany. Development of the TA-183 had begun as early as 1942. However, the aircraft was initially considered an experimental project, and the technology required to build the warplane was not yet refined. Concept testing and design revisions would continue for the next two years, with no clear path to take the TA-183 into production anytime soon. However, by 1944, the circumstances were completely different, and the Luftwaffe was desperately scouring for promising solutions to counter the increasingly frequent Allied bombing raids into Axis territories. Emergency Program The recently tested Messerschmitt Me 262 showcased formidable capabilities and an aptitude to outperform almost any warplane the Allies had available. Still, problems with engine stability and a complete lack of strategic resources meant that Germany could not produce enough jet fighters to significantly impact the war. Making matters worse, the German High Command had learned that the Allies were in the final testing phases of their own jet fighter, the British Gloucester Meteor. Having to deal with such a powerful aircraft over the skies of Europe seemed like a nightmare scenario for Germany. Even if the Me 262 was theoretically faster and nimbler, they would not be able to produce enough to contend against the efficient Allied manufacturing capabilities. As such, the Third Reich instituted the Emergency Fighter Program, which took effect on July 3, 1944. The idea was straightforward. The nation was in dire need of fighter aircraft in massive numbers, and the Me 262 could not be produced in large quantities. Thus, the Emergency Fighter Program would fund powerful but cheap fighter solutions, preferably jet engine or rocket engine designs. Subsequently, the Luftwaffe canceled production of most bomber and multi-role aircraft to secure the necessary resources, and once the program was live, the ambitious and experimental T-8183 was revisited. If it could be adjusted to use as few strategic resources as possible, the radical warplane could just be the Luftwaffe's last hope. Designing the TA-183 Despite Germany's inability to produce the Me 262 in large numbers, it had taught them a great deal about jet airplane design. Even if it was meant to be a much cheaper option, the TA-183 was conceived as a faster, more stable, and more agile fighter than its more expensive predecessor. The TA-183 was meant to replace all frontline fighters in Luftwaffe service, including the recent first-generation Me 262 Schwalbe and the Hinkle HE-162 Volksjäger fighters. 
It was envisioned by aircraft designer Kurt Tunk's team, led by talented engineer Heinz Multop, in response to an RLM initiative, calling for a competent jet-powered fighter as part of its evolving emergency fighter program. Tunk's team nicknamed the fighter Hookabine, inspired by the Hans Hookabine cartoon about an unlucky raven that gets everyone around him in trouble. Still, the aircraft was officially referred to as Project 5, or Project 6 in some cases, and the engineers at Focke-Wulf called it Design 2. The TA-183's layout was extraordinarily innovative and featured a nose-mounted intake running underneath the bubble canopy cockpit. For better performance at high speeds and more stability when landing and taking off, the fighter was designed with swept-back wings of 40 degrees, a tricycle undercarriage, and an iconic high-mounted T-tail system that gave it a futuristic look. The pilot operated the controls from a center-position cockpit area just at the rear of the nose intake and above the monoplane wings, and the jet was powered by a single Hinkle HES-011 series turbojet engine with 3,500 pounds of force. TA-183 was projected to achieve cruising speeds of up to 620 miles per hour, significantly more than the 530 miles per hour the ME-262 could reach, and much more than any Allied warplane in service could muster. Plus, to effectively engage Allied bombers advancing over Germany, Hookabine was to be fitted with a battery of four heavy-caliber Mark 108 series 30mm cannons, all mounted in the nose and capable of shredding through fighters and bombers alike. The aircraft was also intended to carry a robust payload of up to a thousand pounds of external munitions to fulfill the role of a strike fighter if needed. Additionally, the centerline fuselage position would allow for semi-recessed ordnance, while some five hardpoints on the fuselage could be assigned with specific additional ordnance. During the initial design phases, several ideas were taken under consideration, including the use of rocket-assisted takeoff. The structure was mostly of aluminum, steel sheeting, and wood, but as the project progressed closer to manufacture, the materials would have to be adjusted. The initial plan was to use aluminum in the composition of the main spar, consisting of two I-beams attached together on the top and bottom with sheer webs of thin steel sheeting. Still, the shortage of aluminum that Germany faced in the latter part of 1944 forced the designers to switch to wood for the wing structure, with wooden ribs attached to the front and back of the beams to give the wing its general shape and then covered with plywood. The wooden wings and structure made the aircraft extremely vulnerable to enemy fire, but the overwhelming speed at which it was meant to engage its targets was projected to serve as enough protection from enemy systems. Fate As the TA-183's early design phase reached its final stage, Tunk's engineers ran out of time. It was now January of 1945, and the team was still struggling to polish several problems regarding the jet's center of gravity. On February 28th, the Luftwaffe authorities evaluated the various emergency fighter schemes and selected the Junkers EF-128 to be urgently developed and produced, with the Focke-Wulf team and their Hookabine earning second place. However, in a sudden twist of fate, it was ultimately decided that the Hookabine was really the best design, and Tank was instructed to create mock-ups and prepare for a first test flight in May of 1945. Unfortunately for Tank and his team, the significant war efforts around the world would soon reach a point of no return, and the Germans were unable to finish their prototypes before British troops captured the Focke-Wulf facilities on April 8th. Usually, this would have been the end of the story for almost any other Nazi-funded plane design, but the Hookabine would continue its journey far away from home. Exiled in Argentina, Kurt Tank used his local government influence to resurrect the TA-183 project, renaming it the IAE-33 Purki II, or Aero in the Mapuche language. Several adjustments were made to the original design to guarantee stability and increase performance. The Purki II would have several prototypes produced, and it would even see action during the Revolución Libertadora coup of 1955. Still, after a severe financial crisis struck Argentina, the project was cancelled, and the country opted to buy F-86 Sabres at a fraction of the cost of a hookabine. Some war historians also claim that the Soviet Mikoyan Grievich MiG-15 was inspired by the TA-183 after the Soviets captured Hookabine's blueprints at the end of World War II. The MiG-15 does bear a striking resemblance in design 
high tailplane, and nose-mounted intake, though the aircraft are distinct in structure, details, and dimensions. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like and share buttons, and consider subscribing to Dark Skies and all our other Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting history-inspired content. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to click on the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.